Hello, so today's video is going to be on the Russian PMK free gas mask, which has come in this nice sort of flora bag, flora camo bag. I think this is the same material they make the ROU out of that's, you know, meant to be that sort of anti-flash burn resistant coating, which is quite cool. So it's a sort of combined Velcro and button popper sort of style one. And what's basically in here, I haven't really used the mask yet, so I'll get out and show you mostly what you get in here. So you get the mask itself in whatever size you ordered, if you got to choose a size. So there's the mask in its sort of plastic bag. This was also in the mask when I first got it, but I pulled that out, obviously the thing to retain the shape while in storage. Some other bits like that. There is the filter, which is quite unusual, because the PMK-3 uses a different type of filter than the, you know, common Soviet Goss style masks, which we'll get onto in a minute. And there was also some other bits. There is a PMK-3 style filter to Ghost adapter, if you wanted to use it with retro filters, you know, like 40mm filters, but Soviet 40mm filters. And there is the drinking tube attachment by the look of it, so that's pretty standard. And there is also two outsert lenses in here, as you can see, and a plastic cap, which is to seal off the side of the mask you're not using, which I'll get onto in a moment. Um, and yeah, two outserts. I'm assuming this has anti-fog lamp something or other in here, that's generally what's in those, although I can't see anything in my particular one. And a filter sock by the look of it, unless this was just for... This might have just been actually for the outserts, but we'll try it as a filter sock in a bit and see if it works. So I think that's everything in the bag. Um, I'm sort of a bit mixed on opinion of the quality of this bag, because it's one where it feels quite thin and flimsy, but it is made from that outside material that's meant to be very durable, so who knows. Um, I'm not going to try and break it on purpose. I do that with enough stuff by accident. So um, let's have a look at the mask itself. So, there's the PMK2, which I don't have. I have a PMK1, and I think the PMK1, honestly, is quite a dreadful mask. So this is the PMK3, and the idea was of the PMK3 that it could be used by either left or right-handed shooters, and it was kind of, you know, designed to be a bit more modernised. But unfortunately, um, we'll find out if this is a problem or not. If you look at the inside of the mask, it looks like it has the exact same sort of annoying rubber seal problem that the other PMKs have. You also notice it looks a bit squashed. Again, I think it might be the issue that it's made from a really soft rubber, which, although that would make it comfortable, also means it's a bit too fragile uh, for a military mask, but we'll see. So you can see the voice diaphragm in there, drinking tube. So that's the mask itself. So, unfortunately, it still seems like they're using those awful, awful plastic straps from the sort of um, GP7 PMK1 era. What I'm going to try and do first is just put the mask on without adjusting the straps and just see if it fits me. If not, I'm going to have to try and adjust the straps off camera, then come back. So, ooh, that is horribly tight. No, that is not going to fit on me. So what I'm going to have to do is adjust the straps, and because these are the really irritating types of straps to adjust, as you can probably see, I'm going to do it off camera so I don't try and rush it and end up breaking something. So I'm just going to probably do via, because it's got the numbers on it, so I'm probably just going to go up a couple on each strap, see if it fits, then do, you know, one more on each strap over and over until it fits. Okay, step one is done, it wasn't as frustrating as I thought. As annoying as these kind of straps are to adjust, the plastic does at least seem a lot more durable than the PMK1 GP7 style strap, so it didn't feel like I was going to break it while adjusting it. I found the easiest way was kind of pull it there, and then pull it either way you wanted to do. Whether or not this will fit me properly, I don't know yet, but it's at least been loosened on every strap now, to about the 5-6 sort of point on every strap, so... Whether or not you're meant to put your chin into this mask first and pull this button... Yeah, it looks like it. So, okay, that is actually a lot more comfortable than the PMK1. The drinking tube is definitely trying to poke itself up my nose, so I'm just finding out... Ah, yeah, the drinking tube does swivel in here. So that's a nice start. So, this is already better than the PMK1, I can tell you that. The Because the rubber inside is actually more flexible, what ends up happening is it flexes away from the face when you put it on, meaning that, um, you know, you don't get loads of your vision cut off if the rubber insides aren't quite the right size. So, visually, actually, now it's on, it reminds me a bit of the Scott M95 that Finland uses. Um, I suppose it's probably just because of those bulgy out sort of cheek sections. Anyway, let's have a look at the filter system. Because that is a bit strange. So, the idea was of this mask, 
that they were going to move away from Ghost filters. So how it works is you basically have a blanking plug to put in one side of the mask. Um, I suppose it's probably possible to set up a dual filter system. And on the other filter you use basically a kind of deflector system. Um, as far as it seems like that's the XL valve bit I guess. Um, and then they kind of have a weird sort of you know like four prong screw in type system. So this is probably going to be one of those things that gets really really awkward on camera and it's going to annoy me trying to do it. So obviously I want to use the filter really with the um, I want to obviously use the filter is it because I'm a right handed shooter I want it set up that way. So I don't know why it's taking me ages to think of that. So I'm going to want obviously on my the filter on the left side of my face aren't I? So I can um, cheek weld like that yeah. So we'll put the blanking plug on the right side. Now I'm assuming this is the easy blanking plug to do because I'm assuming of this one you literally just shove this in to the rubber um, and you know it sits in like that. Now how easy this is going to be to do on camera I don't know this might be another bit where I stop the video and then say look I've managed to do it this was either how easy or how hard it was to do. Um, but yeah this is kind of like the horrors of the cheek filter masks all over again. It's trying to shove something that doesn't really want to fit somewhere into, you know, something like that. So, let's just try getting that in. No, I'm going to have to do this bit off camera. Um, hopefully to try and, you know, minimise my frustration of the video taking ages and me just getting annoyed and then people going, Oh no, it's easy to do if you're just not very good at it. Uh, in the comments. So um, see you again in a moment. Right, whether or not I've done this correctly I don't know. I'm pretty sure this side is correct because that makes sense, the blanking plug just kind of sitting there like that. The bit that I don't really get is this filter. Now, is the filter meant to um, screw into the thing inside? Because if so that seems pointless because if you look at this um, you'll probably be able to see if the camera gets the angle right and if I can actually get the angle right to show you on the camera which is probably going to be easier said than done. Great, I don't think I'm going to be able to show you. The point is that this filter basically you just push it through and it attaches to the mask that way and seems to be airtight. So what the purpose of screwing the other bit on, on the inside on the sun, I'm missing something really obvious, I don't know. But anyway, uh, let me try putting the mask on now and see if I, seeing if I can breathe through it. Oh, actually, it might be a good idea to remove that first. Not suffocate. Also, for the people wondering, there's definitely paper heaper filters in this, not the old Soviet asbestos cardboard type stuff. So, again, that's probably not going to show up on the camera, even with the softbox light on right now. But, oh, there you go, you can see a little bit of it there. It looks very different, is my point, to the old Soviet things, if you look at it. So yeah, it's a, it's a paper heaper, it's fine. Probably particular level 3. Anyway, let's try and get this on. Okay, there we go. Alright, pressure checking seems to work. Yeah, because it makes a weird noise. So there we go. Um... I'm a bit confused by this system, because I do not see any benefit to going to this from Ghost. In all honesty, what I'll probably end up doing is putting this into the mask, and then uh, just, you know, using the Ghost thread. Because that would be more practical. Apparently, you know, I've read that these filters off apparently offer better levels of protection at a smaller size. But I don't see how it would be any different than them just putting a 40mm Ghost thread on this side, rather than the weird, like, prong thing that fits through the rubber. But, there you go. So, what do I think of this mask? The voice diaphragm sounds alright, from what I can see from the camera's microphone indicator. It's a lot more comfortable than the PMK-1, that's for sure, and the GP-7. I'd say a better mask in every way than those. But, that's not all that hard, because there's a lot of masks that are better than that. You can see it's still got that weird thing that probably limits your field of view. Let me just try something. Yeah, it does. Okay, so... It still has that weird rubber in a seal problem, where, you know, some of that seems to limit your field of view, but it's not as bad. Um, I suppose my thoughts on this are initially that it's an improvement over the PMK-1, but it's no surprise that the PMK-4 or the PMKS, whatever it's called, the one that's replacing this, 
actually just looks like a much more modern Avon M50 sort of Western style mask, you know, a panoramic lens and everything like that. Um, so yeah, this is definitely better than the PMK1, don't get me wrong. Although, I kind of just don't understand why Russia hasn't ditched this mask altogether. Because, um, you know, the thing is, Soviet masks were brilliant, in my opinion. Just simply because they were so simple and mass-producible. The problem with the late-era Soviet masks, and the masks the Russian Federation seemed to adopt and sort of carry on, sort of improving, are the ones that are basically too complicated for their own good. Soviet masks worked for the most part because they were very simple. You know, if you're going to have a product that's simple, it needs to be, you know, um, very good at the few things it does. When you add lots of features onto a mask, but lots of them are poorly implemented, they all become problems. You know, if it would leak and let gas through, then it's a life-endangering problem. If it's just a comfort sort of, you know, type problem or something like that, you know. That's that. One cool use of these filters, I think, is you might be able to force them into cheek filter masks. So there's that. So, if you wanted to uh, get a PBF and wear stalker-style filters on it, you could probably do it with these. But yeah. So, that's probably my thoughts summing it up now. Um, it's better than the PMK1 GP7, that's for sure. They've not fixed all the problems I had with it, but obviously they're problems I've had, not necessarily everybody else has with it, because it is my opinion, after all. But, you know, I'd have thought, really, if I was in charge of, you know, fix our masks, please, in the Russian government, whoever issues the orders to the companies, I would have probably said, just come up with a new design that works. You know, and then pick the best design that different companies come up with, a bit like we do in the West. But there might be reasons they didn't do that. As I said, it might be that they have some sort of license to have this style of mask, but if they had to go for a different style, they'd have to pay a big license fee. So, there we go. No idea if there is any benefit to these filters over the older style Ghost ones. I mean, obviously, these are safer to breathe through, for sure, but I mean, I don't know if there was any actual benefit to moving away from 40mm Ghost. Um, but yeah, overall, it's not too bad, I suppose. But if I compared it to something like an FM12, a Fushida, you know, the M40 potentially, but that needs a second skin. You know, but especially if you compared it to the M50, the C50, loads of the sort of modern Western masks, it does feel quite inadequate. Inadequate, sorry. But, yeah, as I said, it's not awful in my opinion. It, I certainly like it more than the um, regular GP7 and PMK. But if you look at it, you know, you can still see, maybe from how that rubber sort of formed there, that it's kind of a bit... Hard. I don't know, really. It's hard to explain, but it's just... It feels strange when you've got something that's obviously been improved from the sort of previous design flaws. Some things have been fixed, other things have been left in, and then there's some bizarre decisions like completely change the filters away from 40mm. I know it comes at the 40mm adap adapter, so it's not a full problem, but it just seems a strange choice. Like, why would you bother? You know, to me this feels a bit like it could be a cheek filter mask, um, because it has got the cheek pouches in there, essentially, for how you fit those sort of internal connectors in. So, you know, I suppose it's kind of a case of trying to reinvent the wheel ever so slightly. You know, they've they've taken a wheel and they've made, like, a spoke kind of thing that's got loads and loads and loads of sides, but it's not quite a wheel. It doesn't quite work as efficiently. But there you go. It, it's not awful by any means. The straps are certainly easier to adjust and stronger than the ones on the PMK1 and GP7. Um, the rubber is more comfortable. Um, it's a similar type of rubber, but it does seem to flex a bit better. I'm not having the annoying issue I had with the uh, regular GP7 PMK where the air seems to come up and hit me in the eye, making me want to blink constantly. So overall, yes, it definitely is better than the PMK1, I know I've said that a few times already in this video, I just want to reiterate that. I don't totally hate this thing, but it just seems quite odd to me that they did this and not just basically said, let's design a new mask from scratch that fixes all the problems of the old one not kind of ironing out the problems of PMK1 over several generations of the same sort of series of masks. But there you go, that's just my opinion. If you don't like my opinion, you're free to disagree, of course. Because um, that's the strange thing, you know, my, my opinion is not fact, it's my opinion. And my opinion is, better than the PMK1, but why didn't they just rip off or design a new mask, basically? That would be my uh, opinion to summarise, basically.